Though it's only a 20 minute drive from Richmond City Center, Tuckahoe is tucked away down an almost mile long gravel drive that transports you back in time. So after parking in the parking lot, you'll have a brief walk up the lane and you'll encounter these white gates and you'll be able to see the main house off in the distance. And this will be your guest's first impression of the formal grounds. As we walk up the main drive here, you are able to see two sides of the lawn. The east side here and the west side over here. These are two reception location options for you. The east side here is more open and can accommodate a tent that can fit up to a 300 person seated dinner. The west side here has more trees that punctuate the space and so is more challenging for a tent, especially one with a larger guest count. That's usually used for open air options. The carriage circle in front of the house has frequently been used for reception dinners of up to 120 people. Of course, we're outdoors, so you could spread out as much as you want, but of course some feng shui is lost if you go much over 120 guests in attendance. From here, if we look off to the east, you'll see the white gates that lead down the ghost walk. This is the guests access to the ceremony site. As we reach the end of the ghost walk here, the landscape opens up a touch and guests can get a sneak peek of the ceremony site, mainly the arch right there in the distance. I usually encourage folks to put something in this memorial garden here to draw them into this space because it's a really sweet little garden. Of course, everything's dormant right now, but even the bones of the place are really beautiful, full of boxwood, but also full of roses. So in the growing season, they're blooming a pale pink rose all season long. And that way, the guest's first impression of the ceremony site is from this direction, which is as it's intended to be viewed. After the ceremony, guests exit the ceremony site by going back up these steps and into the memorial garden once again. The most popular spot for cocktail hour traditionally is the formal gardens just to the west of this memorial garden area. And that's because the formal gardens are large and expansive and they're usually blooming the hardest out of any of the gardens from April up through October until we hit our first frost. The Pleached Arbor or Tree Tunnel here is becoming an increasingly popular option for seated dinners outdoors. It has Christmas lights that run the length of it and is about 55 feet long and can accommodate parties of up to 50 or 60 guests. Here I'm standing in the heart of the formal gardens and typically when cocktail hours are hosted out here, the bar for cocktail hour is either nestled between that stand of trees that we're looking at here or directly behind us between these stands of trees here just in front of that bench. It can go anywhere where you'd like it to go but functionally speaking that tends to be the most popular places to put it and then high top tables scattered throughout the gardens are usually a popular option, just encouraging guests to explore all the nooks and crannies of the gardens.
Just to the left of the main house, we have a large sweeping lawn called the East Lawn. It's just beside or next to, depending on your point of view, the old schoolhouse where Thomas Jefferson learned how to read and write. This lawn is our largest tentable reception site option. We've had weddings of 500 guests seated in this lawn right here. Um, it is also our most blank slate area. So we've also seen some quite unique weddings happen here. It's right next to the ceremony site as well, which you see just on the other side of those bushes there. So if you have guests in attendance with limited mobility, this lawn is easily accessible to them without requiring them to walk all over the property. Just to the right side of the main house, we come to our south lawn. The major features of this lawn right here are the river view, which we'll see in a moment. Of course, during the growing season, the trees are leafed out, so the view of the river isn't quite as clear as it is right now, but is always visible no, what, no matter what time of year it is. Other features of this space, because of the proximity of the river and the way that weather systems play off of the water, there's a semi-constant breeze on this lawn. So especially if you're thinking about hosting your wedding in a month that is traditionally a warmer month, that could be a really great feature. If you're thinking about hosting your wedding early April or late October, where you could get a chilly day, that's a factor to consider as well. The tent that fits in this space would fit right between this tree here and the playhouse in the distance and it is large enough to accommodate a seated dinner of up to 200 guests. If you did use this space as a reception site that little white picket fence in between the old kitchen to the left and the office to the right can be lifted up and carried away to give you more direct access to that road. Exiting the south lawn here, you're led onto a gravel drive that's lined with historic buildings. The old kitchen here is one of them. The office was the overseer's house in Derry. Right next to the old kitchen, we find the herb garden. It is the location of the original herb garden, but is set up in a really charming English garden style herb and floral garden. It's large enough to accommodate a cocktail hour of up to 25 guests, but it's typically used for photo opportunities like engagement shoots, first looks, bridal portraits, etc. During the growing season, it's full of flowers and herbs. It's beautiful and smells amazing. A bit further down our gravel drive, we look to the left and we see the old stable. So the old stable you have access to for the entirety of the wedding day, in addition to access to the grounds for the entirety of the day. So this space usually is utilized as a groom's den for at least part of the day. Sometimes we'll have brides come in here with their bridesmaids and do hair and makeup in this old stable area before moving over to the main house to get dressed smaller events of 50 people or less, this space offers a really fantastic rain plan option. But standard use of this space is for groom's den for getting ready, for green room for your band members if you choose to go with a live band rather than a DJ, and for prep area. You have access to this space starting the week before the wedding to stage items like decorations, alcohol, favors, anything that you want here on the day of the wedding that you don't want to have to remember to bring that day, you can stage them in this area. There's a back deck that doubles the space available that is at your disposal for, for whatever purpose you might want to use it for. 
We've seen folks who have a friend or family member want to do their flowers set up a flower shop out here. I've seen folks put a private bar for the bridal party out here as well. So they have a space to step away to and get away from the main amount of the crowd to catch their breath. Some folks don't choose to use it at all. It's up to you. Off to one wing of the old stable are the restrooms that we provide. Two stalls that can accommodate up to 100 people in an evening. We are on well and septic here. So our septic system cannot handle more than 100 people in an evening. So if your guest count is going to exceed that, we'll just need to bring in an additional restroom trailer to accommodate those guests. Here we are in front of the main house again, where we're going to step inside and see the bridal suite. The main house potentially has many uses for your wedding day, not just for bridal suite, but folks have also used it to host a receiving line where guests would enter in one door and exit through the other. If that were the case, this center table in the middle of the Great Hall will be moved to provide straight access through the house. Other options are for a guided historic tour during cocktail hour, which can sometimes be a very popular option, especially if you have guests in attendance with a historic inclination. But for now, we're going to step upstairs and view the bridal suite. These gorgeous hand-carved black walnut stairs have been utilized heavily for bridal portraits to a lovely effect. The bridal suite comprises of three bedrooms. First to the left here, the blue room, a favorite of photographers. As well as across the hall to the red bedroom. This still shows the original dark walnut paneling. These two rooms are furnished in period appropriate antiques. They're gorgeous for photo opportunities for getting ready or if you want to come in beforehand and do bridal portraits in here as well. View down the main stairs. You also have access to a third bedroom that has two adjoining bathrooms. This space has provided ample room for bridal parties of up to nine or even 10 people. Access to the main house during bridal use hours is limited to the bride, bridesmaids, parents and grandparents, as well as flower girls, as long as they have a parent in attendance. This is not accessible to the main amount of your guests. If you like your guests to see the interior of the main house to get a deeper appreciation of where you brought them to celebrate your special day, then a guided tour during cocktail hour might be a great idea. Food and drink inside the main house is limited to water, except for on the south porch, just outside those doors, and the dining room. You're welcome to set up a buffet style spread in the dining room for your bridal party to enjoy. And that would be in this space right here. The standard wedding package offers two hours in the bridal suite, but additional hours may be purchased if you wish.